Welcome to this fire safety awareness course brought to you courtesy of safety.com. I'm here to help guide you through this short course and the main aim is to introduce or refresh you on the concept and importance of fire safety in the workplace. Let's get started. It's useful to know that for a fire to start, three key elements are needed. Firstly, a source of ignition or heat. Secondly, a source of fuel. And thirdly, a supply of oxygen. Once these three elements combine to start a fire, the fire can continue and spread provided it has an adequate supply of fuel and oxygen. And if any one of these is missing, a fire can not start. Taking measures to reduce the chances of the three coming together will therefore reduce the chances of a fire taking place. As an employee, you must cooperate to ensure that your workplace is free from fire and its effects. Also something to remember is to look out for indications of a near miss. Indications of near misses such as scorch marks on furniture or fittings, discoloured or charred electrical plug sockets, or things like cigarette burns for example. If you have detected the fire but no alarm has sounded, then you or someone else in the surrounding area may need to raise the alarm by using a brake glass. Your site should have an established assembly or muster point to be used in the event of an evacuation where occupants can gather safely and be accounted for by those responsible. Depending on the outcomes of the fire risk assessment for your particular circumstances, there may be fire wardens or marshals delegated to help and assist in the event of an emergency evacuation. Okay, now I'm going to give you the opportunity to take part in a little task. What I want you to do is after this video finishes, take a few minutes to walk around the premises or area that you're in and take stock of the signs, system and equipment that you can see relating to fire safety and evacuation, thinking back to all of the things we've discussed so far. A good fire risk assessment should pick up and recommend where specific types of extinguishers may be used and also to point out where to avoid certain types of extinguisher. This will limit the risk of using incompatible extinguishers for the wrong application, such as using a water-based extinguisher for electrical equipment, the pressure gauge which some of our extinguishers will have, and what we want to see when we look at the pressure gauge is that the dial itself is sitting in the green zone. You've almost completed this short fire awareness training session. We hope you've gained a better understanding or refreshed your memory on those conditions that can lead to fire, the very serious risks from a fire event, and of course, the importance of the prevention and control measures that are in place to reduce the risk of fire and of harm to you and others.